Hello and welcome to today's webinar with eLotus. We have been hosting edu educational courses here at eLotus for two decades and we're proud to be your trusted source of premium CU content with over 250 speakers, 900 courses, and 3,500 hours of continuing education. My name is Donna Chow and I'll be your host and your moderator for today's class. Today's webinar is Master Dong's Brilliant Strategies in the Clinic for Female Disorders presented by Dr. Robert Chu who is a longtime instructor at eLotus. If you're interested in learning from his earlier work, please visit eLotus.org to find his distant learning CEU videos. So for today's class, it will be from 9 to 6 p.m. Pacific time with lunch from about 1 to 2 p.m. We'll have four breaks, two before lunch and two after. Dr. Chu will let you know when we go on break. Before we begin, let's go over some important details about the chat room, questions for our instructor and your CEU quiz. For the chat room, we do ask that you set your chat preference to everyone so that everyone joining us can see what you're typing and be part of the conversation. For questions for Dr. Chu, please type them directly into the Q&A box and be sure that these are questions related to today's webinar only. Uh, for questions about, um, about the, the webinar that it's intended for me, go ahead and just type them directly into the chat room. Or if you have any comments or want to say thank you to Dr. Chu for answering your question, please type those directly into the chat room box. And your quiz, they, it will be available on the following working day tomorrow and an email will be sent to you when it's, when it's ready. The video replay will also be ready tomorrow and just go ahead and check your course access page at the end of the day. All right, so our speaker today is Dr. Robert Chu, a licensed acupuncturist and herbalist, specializing in the master dome acupuncture methods. In his private practice in Los Angeles, he effectively treats pain, a wide variety of internal disorders, gynecological disorders, infertility, and side effects from cancer treatments. Let's go ahead and start the class now and welcome our speaker, Dr. Chu. Dr. Chu, can you go ahead and share your screen now and your PowerPoint as well? Thank you. All right, can everyone see that? Just uh, mention it in the chat room that you can see it. Okay, it says that you, you guys could see it. Excellent, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Well, thank you uh, for yesterday and uh, very excited to see you guys for today. I um, um, uh, have a lot uh, more uh, disorders uh, in the clinic for us to examine and explore together. And uh, one of the things I have to say is, uh, you know, your your patient uh, business is maybe about 70, 80% females, because why? As I mentioned yesterday, men uh, don't go to see the doctors often, you know? So uh, uh, women are smart, they, they, they go to the clinic and they, they see the practitioner and, uh, you know, they get treated and they take care of things before um, before it becomes a problem. So I want you to know uh, it's, a, it's a good uh, strategy to have woman's health in your clinic as a specialty because you'll always see it. And um, someone might wonder, how can a male doctor be a specialist in, in uh, uh, woman's health? I'll tell you, my background is in martial arts and Qigong. Um, I studied uh, Wing Chun, I studied Tai Chi, Xing Yi, Bagua, and uh, various uh, northern and southern fist systems for a very long time. And uh, one of the things I noticed when I was studying with uh, one of my teachers, uh, he had a practice, and in the practice, he had a lot of female uh, patients. And I always thought it was because he was, uh, you know, because he he was uh, good at the traumatology that uh, he would be good, uh, you know, uh, for treating their aches and pains orthopedic. And I said, you have a lot of female patients. Why is that? And he told me, well, that's because orthopedics and uh, gynecology and Chinese medicine are two sides of the same coin. I said, what? How's that? He goes, well, you know, when you get injured or hurt or you fall or you get hit um, and you have bruise, contusion, that's blood stasis. And so when you deal with women, uh, there's usually a lot of blood stasis, when it, especially when it comes to women's health issues, OK? 
Okay, so you better know this, right? And actually, if you study the medicine in deep, you'll see that is interrelated. And uh, indeed, I, I studied the medicine. I saw a lot of things that are very much interrelated. For example, Tao Hong Su Wu Tang is a very basic uh, herbal formula for moving the blood and tonifying the blood. And then it is the mother of the of the Zhu Yu Tang formulas. Of course, we know uh, the Zhu Yu Tang Tong formulas <clears throat> are for gynecological issues as well as heart conditions and other things like that. So, for example, Shui Fu Zhu Yu Tang is for heart problems, and Ge uh, Xia Zhu Yu Tang is for stomach or abdominal problems and bleeding, and then Xia Fu Zhu Yu Tang usually for OBGYN type of issues. But then people don't realize, oh, this there's everything else in the Zhu Yu Tang family. For example, Tong Chao, Ho Xue Tang, is uh, one of the formulas that deals with headaches and pain in the head. And um, you also have uh, San Tong Zhu Yu Tang, which is the whole body is in pain and you're able to use it. And then Xue Fu Zhu Yu Tang could be used for any rib or chest pain for traumatologies. Ge Xia Zhu Yu Tang, good for any type of lower rib cage pain, lower abdominal pain. And Xia Fu Zhu Yu Tang would be for the lower torso type of pain and traumatology. So traumatology and gynecology in Chinese medicine is two sides of the same coin. I, I would agree 100% with my teacher. So anyway, um, Thank you very much for attending. I, I figure you have much better things to do on a Sunday than to listen to me and some of my bad jokes and poor humor. So I'll try to keep it as entertaining and moving along as, as possible. I've uh, geared up. Uh, my throat is a little bit sore today, but I've taken cordyceps uh, to kind of help me uh, build my lung chi. I have my uh, tea with lemon here uh, that I'm going to be drinking and uh, probably drinking uh, different uh, teas during out the day. Uh, tea is like the staff of life for me these days. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that I've discovered uh, as I've matured and uh, much better than coffee uh, and much more variations. And uh, you, you'll love the variations. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, so... Uh, we're going to talk about uh, brilliant strategies, and, and I'm focusing on Master Dong's points, but I'm also focusing on herbals as well. Okay. Please excuse any gender pronouns that may be exclusive for an audience this size. Okay, I can't possibly tailor it to everyone. And um, if a disease is both, okay, I simply listed in one of the categories that I've seen more cases of uh, based on that gender uh, based on my clinical experience. So I can't say, you know, okay, neck and shoulder pain, for example, it's common to both males and females. However, when it comes to, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, 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 um, issues, right, then, uh, you know, uh, I happen to see maybe more females of this type of case. So I wanted, I wanted to tell you, and you know, uh, Master Dong's points, uh, maybe some of you, this is the first time that you're getting introduced to it, or that uh, maybe some people, you know, just want to teach you a bunch of points and stuff. I want to teach you the application and usage. And to get the best results, try needling yourselves, right? Try hands-on. You know, it's a shame we don't meet in person anymore, uh, and Zoom is the way to go, uh, you know, well, E Lotus pioneered it, but uh, aside from that, um, you know we are physical medicine, and because we are physical medicine, it really requires hands-on. So if you try needling yourself, uh, one of the best things is uh, getting the skill of needling yourself. And I'll try to direct you uh, uh, with regards to the needling, and um, I could uh, show you the style and what you're looking for to palpate. But it's up to you to do it uh, in the clinic, and if you want to spend a day or so with me in the clinic and, you know, you want to perfect your needling and maybe get more of a hands-on approach, you can arrange it with me and we can talk about that, okay? So I want you to, uh, uh, you know, really be physical 
um, in in palpating the point, looking for the point, and try to feel and see what I what I see. Unfortunately, since the uh, California exam has changed in the I guess 1999-2000 time frame, uh, they decided not to uh, include uh, a point location, uh, uh, palpation, and in insertion. Um, the, I feel that the standard of acupuncture has gone down in this country. And by going down, basically what I'm thinking is uh, not enough people are uh, are skilled in the palpation skills, and it takes quite a bit of time. I see a lot of one-finger wonders when they do their acupuncture. They uh, they have the guide tube and the needle in this manner, and then they pop, and then drop the needle in. Uh, you know, the cla the classical is the left hand is the important hand in, in acupuncture needling. So what that means is in the left hand, I press very hard with the fingernail or thumb, and then I insert the needle in, especially if you're doing it freehand. If I see one, one needle wonders do it in that way, then I, I wonder, what are you doing, you know? Um, so I don't think that's the best way and best approach. I think it's a sloppy approach. And uh, you could actually hurt the patient more. Me, if I use a guide tube, what I do also is I press down with the guide tube in this hand very hard. And when I press down on the surface of the skin, then I tap the needle very fast and then insert it. But the guide tube does a lot of pressure. So I might even press uh, the uh, guide tube so that it depresses the skin up to about maybe a half, half a trend. I could see the skin uh, depresses about half a trend. And then when I insert the needle, the needle just needs that little space. And when I remove the guide tube, the, the, the skin moves up around the needle. So it's like down, and then I remove the pressure from the guide tube, and the needle's already embedded. I don't have to do uh, so much insertion. And it's actually a quick and painless way of doing things. So, you know, I urge you not to be a one-handed, uh, one-needle wonder uh, but rather uh, be a two-handed, just like the, the classical acupuncture method. I have heard about this uh, Last of Us a pandemic uh, movie, and I'm very intrigued, so I'm going to try to go watch it and see it. So thank you so much. All right. Well, anyway, I'd like to start out with a story uh, about a Zen master um, and a philosophy professor, and uh, the philosophy professor went to visit a Zen master and talk about, uh, well, talk about Zen. And uh, during their chat, the master poured some tea into the uh, visiting professor's cup. And he poured and poured and poured, and the professor could no longer stand it. He said, master, the, key, the cup is overflowing with tea. Please don't pour any more. And he, the master, chided the uh, professor and said, you're like this cup full of your own views and your own way of thinking. If you do not empty your cup first, how do you, how do I show you Zen? How do you taste my tea? Okay. So basically, you know, maybe you guys grab a cup of tea now and then enjoy it and drink it with me. We have a good time together today. Uh, it'll go very fast. And, uh, you know, I hope uh, to share my insights with you, okay? And uh, one of the things I'd like to say is uh, when I teach, I always think of the source. You know, Chinese are ancestor worshipers too, uh, native-like. Uh, uh, we're, uh, uh, we're not all Buddhists or Christian or Catholic or Taoist or Confucianists, right? we really believe more in ancestor worship. And we always believe that the ancestors are with us. And so we have a saying in Chinese, when you drink water, remember the source. Okay, where does this water come from? And so I would like to always acknowledge uh, Master Dong for his great teaching as has passed, passed it down to the present. Uh, I'm lucky because I got to study with uh, two of Master Dong's uh, disciples and uh, I consider myself lucky to, to have met uh, them and then gotten the bulk of their teachings and then understand their method, okay? First one was Yang Weijie, Dr. Yang Weijie, who's now retired, living in Roland Heights, uh, California. 
And uh, I approached Dr. Young at the behest of uh, Esther Sue, who was Miriam Lee's student. And um, I wanted to really learn uh, the Dong system. And I worked closely with him in setting up some early seminars uh, when Dr. Young was here in California um, and then uh, acted as his uh, personal translator. And then uh, Dr. Wang Chanmin, I had met him during some of uh, Dr. Young's classes and uh, he was so kind to me uh, by uh, answering all the questions that I had about Dong's acupuncture and shared with me his interpretation and version of it. So I was very lucky. So that's actually Master Dong there. And so I just mentioned the, the two teachers of mine. Uh, um, I did mention on this slide, but I mentioned him yesterday, was my other teacher, Dr. Chen Zhao. Chen Zhao was the creator of Yijing acupuncture, uh, also known as the Yijing balance method acupuncture. In Chinese, we call it Yi Li, uh, Ping Heng Zhen Jiu. Okay, so that is his method. And he was instrumental in teaching me. He said during the time when he was studying acupuncture in Taiwan, he was an engineer, a mechanical engineer already. And um, he had a close friend of his who, uh, who studied I Ching and had his own family style of I Ching acupuncture, but his friend would not teach him. And, but Dr. Dr. Chen created his own method through insights and uh, understanding of, uh, of the Yi Jing and was able to interpret the Gua and the Xiang to the, uh, to the acupuncture points and then create the system from there. So he's truly the creator. I know a lot of people were introduced uh, to Dr. Chen's system by the late uh, Dr. Tan, Richard Tan in San Diego and, and throughout the United States and internationally. And um, they have... Uh, uh, done a good job in promoting a lot of the teachings. Recently, uh, one of my uh, my uh, fellow classmates, David Twicken, has written books and have taught the uh, Yijing acupuncture system. I have not yet really come out to teach the Yijing acupuncture system, only small local uh, seminars, but uh, it is something that uh, I've been thinking of because I have been doing a lot more research on the Yijing and then I do consider the Yi Jing to be the first medical book in China uh, that was ever written. And then uh, there's a lot of uh, inference in there that you can use for medicine. Um, I also like to acknowledge a very special lady, Miriam Lee. She passed away. Uh, but Miriam Lee was a pioneer of acupuncture here in the state of California. And not to mention a pioneer of Dong's acupuncture in the USA. If it were not for her teachings, uh, there would not be Dong's acupuncture known to us. And uh, instrumental was her uh, publishing a set of notes, uh, which was la later labeled by Blue Poppy as Master Tong's acupuncture, T-O-N-G-S, when it should be Master Dong's acupuncture uh, with a D. But I guess uh, at that time, Pinyin and Wade Giles' system um, was a little bit uh, uh, not well known or not in wide circulation. And as a result, there was some mixture uh, of, of the name. And instead of using the Taiwan T-U-N-G, which is uh, Wade Giles Romanization, uh, they kind of mixed it up and uh, made it into Tong, Dr. Tong. Uh, there's no Dr. Tong, unless you want to be Dr. Payne, okay? So I'm going to tease you guys. If you're a Dr. Tong, you should be Dr. Dong. Dong's acupuncture, not Tong's acupuncture, even though it's a T. That's the, that's the fault of the two Englishmen who tried to Romanize Chinese uh, back then. Uh, you might know some old Romanizations like chop suey and uh, Peking duck, right? Uh, nobody eats Peking duck. And chop suey is probably some uh, transliteration of Cantonese terms, chop suey, chop suey, right? So I, I think that's what that's supposed to be. So, but Miriam Lee, uh, she started practicing here in the 70s in uh, Sunnyvale, San Jose, uh, I guess uh, Stanford area, uh, um, you know, where she was practicing. And uh, she had like literally a hundred patients uh, that a day that she saw, um, you know, and treated at her clinic. However, Miriam, although she was a 
a, uh, a nurse uh, and knew acupuncture and this was her hobby, she had not a license because there was no California acupuncture board. So as a result, um, she was arrested for practicing acupuncture without a license and went to jail. And she's a tough, tough woman. Uh, when she was in jail, her patients and her supporters all made a petition for her to be released because of the great good uh, she had done and that uh, seemingly miraculous uh, treatment had led to uh, her release. Uh, actually, Ronald Reagan uh, wanted her to be put in jail and kept in jail and made an example. However, a very liberal uh, Governor Jerry Brown, who took over, released her from jail and then uh, made it forward that uh, acupuncture in the state of California was an experimental medical uh, treatment that could be practiced here. There was an acupuncture board set up and then uh, following with licensure and test examination. And so the California Acupuncture Board uh, was was created and now flourishes through to today. Uh, Miriam Lee was one of the catalysts, so she is a great woman, and definitely we should uh, bow in respect to her for what she's done. And few know that she spent about a week with Master Dong to learn of the Master Dong system, and then what she did was uh, she pretty much uh, took notes of uh, Master Dong's practice and how to use it and then started to teach her early students. And then uh, actually one, I was uh, complimented yesterday by one of uh, one of her early students came to came to class. And every time I go up to San Francisco, I, I do bump into some of her uh, early students. So, uh, and one of the great students of hers is Esther Sue, who I believe is her great uh, successor. Esther has her own style, but she worked very closely with Miriam in the clinic for over 10 years. And uh, Esther, I had attended one of the CSOMA lectures that she was giving on Master Dong's acupuncture. And I was so intrigued by the system because when I was a student in acupuncture school, the uh, Chinese students used to sit together for lunch. And one day, one of my classmates was reading this book and I said, hey, what is that? And so I started to read the book um, from Taiwan, and it happened to be Master Dr. Yang's book on Master Dong's acupuncture, and I was very intrigued. I went to Chinatown, got a copy of of the book that day, and I was like, "Wow, this is this is blowing my mind." Seven hundred points outside of the regular acupuncture system that we're learning. You know, I've I've got to really learn this system. I want to learn this. I wish I could learn from this Dr. Yang. So um, when I attended Esther's lecture, she said. Oh, Dr. Young is in the USA now. Why don't you go study with him? He's in Los Angeles. Go look him up. And then sure enough, I happened to uh, find him. And then the rest is, shall we say, history. So uh, we're going on with this. And then since 2004, I came out to teach. I started uh, by lecturing at uh, CSOMA. And um, I created an organization called International Domes Acupuncture Research Association. And basically, I wanted to study uh, acupuncture as passed down by Master Dong and its clinical applications. And few people know that actually Master Dong had three phases in his life. And uh, the students who teach today are a reflection of his, um, of his teachings, okay? Uh, first phase is from 1949 to about the mid 1950s or so. And of course, this time frame is is actually the time frame where uh, TCM started to develop in China, right? But here we are on Taiwan. Uh, Master Dong was uh, starting to uh, practice and teach, and in practicing and teaching in Taiwan, uh, he was using just regular acupuncture points, but used the Master Dong imaging methods as well as. Um, uh, the concept and relationship of the channels, okay? And they, there are eight basic imaging methods, and I'll probably have to do that in a more basic class, or you can refer to my other classes uh, that, that do it. I did speak a little bit uh, yesterday about some of the imaging and, and, and channel um, principles of Master Dong. And, uh, and that was the first phase of his teachings. So they did not use any Dong family points. 
uh, in the mid to late 50s, other acupuncturists started to copy Master Dong's method and they got started to get similar results. So what he did was take out of his pocket the uh, Dong family points, which uh, you're, some of you are familiar today. And then, you know, I mean, you can go to the eLotus website and look at the uh, Dong family points. And, and these are a lot of them today. However, some people are exclusive only to use the Dong family points. And unfortunately, that's not the proper way to use it uh, either, uh, which is, you know, it has to be used with the rationale of the channels and then the imaging together. And then together they will have the, uh, uh, have the miraculous effect that you're looking for, okay? And we should know that channels are specifically the diagnosis of Chinese uh, acupuncture. It is not for herbals per se. However, you can use channel principles to help you in your herbology. But if you really wanna be good, then what happens is uh, you have to understand in acupuncture, acupuncture is based on channels, 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 channels. And the problem with TCM acupuncture is really that it is not channels, it is zhang fu or herbal type of theory overlaid on the acupuncture. And what is true for herbals is not necessarily true of, uh, of acupuncture. So it's a little bit of a change. So the phase two of Master Dong's teachings was just use the Dong family points. Phase three was, uh, I believe, just before the five years before Master Dong's passing. Okay, and basically uh, what he did in the clinic was he freely used all of the Dong family points along with all of the regular acupuncture. And you see, my uh, my teachings reflect all three phases. Sometimes I do only regular channel points, but I use them in a unique way, uh, different than the way you, you're doing them from the way you learn in TCM. And sometimes I only use only the Dong family points. And then sometimes you see me freely mix the Dong family points with other points, okay? So I reflect the three phases of Master Dong's teachings as opposed to just doing one way. Some people just teach, oh, only Dong's points, that's the way. And then some people, tried to say that, you know, they created some other type of system, but in reality, they're only doing maybe phase one of Master Dong's acupuncture, which is using the imaging and the channels uh, and using the regular points and then say it's unique and pass it off as their own. Uh, so I wanna say is a, uh, the, the Dong system is very broad. And as a result of it, we have to realize, you know, some of the teachings of some earlier teachers uh, may not be known to be Master Dong's acupuncture, but in reality it is. So I would like to give the credit to Master Dong for the imaging system, the mirroring system, as well as the interplay of the channel system, right? And uh, so those are the, the three phases of it. And that is what ITARA is about. And ITARA membership is free. It's in It's on Facebook and you can ask for uh, entry into into this closed uh, Facebook group. Uh, we have a lot of discussion and a lot of humor and um, uh, discussion of Dong's points and cases and other things like that. So I certainly uh, you know welcome you. And then I'm very open about uh, the Dong's acupuncture information. So for example, if you go to uh, to Amazon and search for acupuncture and Robert Chu, you'll be able to see. Uh, my six books that I wrote, and also eLotus does carry those six books as well. So the information of of the inform uh, of uh, the Dong system that I teach is all there. So I, I don't hold back any secrets. Uh, you might start with the primer, and then if you go specialize in pain, I wrote a book on pain. Then there's internal medicine. Then there's herbs and and acupuncture, and then finally I think traumatology. And I do have a summary of what I consider the best of Master Dong's. A lot of people overwhelm you with Dong's points. In my opinion, on a daily basis, I probably only use 20 or 30 points of Master Dong's. So it's very easy. And I don't use the numbering system. I feel the numbering system is inadequate. It's only used as a reference point. But you know, if you talk to me, Dr. Chu, I have a problem when I use uh, points 1101, 11.02, uh, 11.03. Uh, 
I don't even answer your email because I have to look up what 11.01 is and 11.02 and 11.03. Now, if you talk to me, you say, I have a problem with Lingu Dabai. If I have a problem with this point or that point, then uh, I, I will talk to you because then you're you're talking to me. Otherwise, I don't want to spend the time to look it up. If you can't look it up, I'm not going to talk to you. So that's that's my opinion. All right. Anyway, let's let's move on here. Why Master Dong's acupuncture? First thing about Master Dong's acupuncture is this distal needling. Okay, um, distal needling is often given a bad rap, especially by a lot of, uh, how can we say, orthopedic types. They're looking for the muscle springing and jumping type of situation. Uh, we can also joke that all, all needling is distal because why? What happens is you have to get a signal to the brain for uh, the acupuncture to work. Well, that's true too, but I would say it's very easy. If we look at the chart that's in back of me, it is the Honma uh, five element chart. And the Honma five element chart is uh, rep represents um, uh, Japanese acupuncture, but as the Chinese uh, presented it to them uh, from the earlier dynasties. And uh, the classic that they refer to here is the classic of difficulties. And in on the chart, we notice there's only uh, the limb points. And these are points that exist below the elbows and below the knees. And that is the way it is. Now, Dr. Tiara uh, sent a message to us uh, to hosts and panelists, but maybe he has to copy and paste and put it down for everybody that uh, five element acupuncture was the first introduced. Then herbal came in late about mid 70s, that's true. And then acupuncture as taught by the schools uh, tried to use acupuncture theory into herbal medicine and is exa exactly true, as I said, right? Uh, TCM is really herbalized acupuncture. It's not, it's not the true acupuncture. However, I, uh, you know, I do wanna say that the Worsley School is its own unique animal uh, with uh, Worsleyisms, so to speak. It is a, uh, it, it may be based on more Japanese uh, five elements as well as uh, some Chinese five elements portions, but it's uniquely its own. So I do want to say it's Worsley's uh, five element system. Uh, but what I'm talking about here is the classical Chinese and Japanese five element system. We're using mother, son, and uh, uh, horari points or horary points, if, if you will. Okay. Uh, in Chinese, we say mu xue, zi xue, and uh, uh, we talk about ben xue, okay? So those are, those are the usage of the five elements type of points. And it's the antique points, okay? The antique points are the five points of the elements, okay? Uh, jing, well, ying spring, shu stream, uh, uh, jing river, hasi, and then you have the yuan, which is the source point, Yuan source, low connecting, and then finally the Xi cleft points. And one of the things that you might see me do is I use the Xi cleft points quite a bit, especially all peppered throughout yesterday's lecture and today's lecture as well, okay? In distal needling, most people say, ah, it doesn't work, it really doesn't work. So my first disease that I'll talk today is, is about distal needling, and then we can try it on ourselves. And if any of you wanna actually needle yourself, you know, grab your needles, right? Try it. Well, what fun is uh, attending a, uh, an acupuncture lecture where someone is just a bobbing head talking and then, you know, going through slides. If you try it, then you'll know. And if you if it doesn't work, then you'll know also, okay? Uh, in Dong's acupuncture, you also have to look at, we combine both regular and Dong family points. If anyone just tells you, just use the Dong family points. Okay, when you're studying, maybe that's a good thing. But when you get proficient at it, be, be sure to use both, okay? But you have to base this on channel diagnosis. The advantage to Dong's acupuncture is you see the effect right away. If you don't see the effect right away, then there's something wrong. You either miss the point or misdiagnosed or you, know, you don't uh, get the effect or the patient Maybe there's some issues with the patient, okay? They're chi and blood deficient, okay? They're emaciated, they're weak, they're old, okay? They, you may not see uh, adequate chi and blood 
uh, give you the effect, okay? And then the other advantage to the dome system is you can't be blamed for local pain or aggravation, okay? So for example, if a pa patient comes to you and they have neck pain, you don't put ne needles in their neck at all. You put it on their ankle, and then from that point, um, uh, you insert the needle and uh, they ask them to move their head. And the other secret to distal needling is palpation. Palpation, not with your fingertip pad, but as I say, with your fingernail. And I have a memnonic to remember this. Use your nail and you shall prevail. Use your nail and you can't fail, all right? If I don't wanna fail, I'll use my nail, okay? Whichever way you wanna remember it, use the nail. Nail is the most important thing, okay? So this way, if you use your nail and you press the point and you insert it, you've nailed it. Ha ha. All right. Anyway, let's move on. Let's see. What do we have? Justine says she's been practicing dome style for a few years. It works great. Very, very rarely, but it happened recently using a distal points. A client will come in with a low back pain with sciatica and I'll do distal points and it still gets worse without going local. I assume I'm missing the correct imaging. Any thoughts? Okay, let me describe and explain that. Uh, even though you may have the correct points, the thing is you need uh, your patient's participation. This way, it's a partnership, okay? You, things don't happen in, in, uh, in a vacuum. You insert the needles, and then you ask the patient, wiggle his back, you know, try to feel your sciatic pain. If you can wiggle your back, you know, you feel looser, and you might feel like this feeling of what? Warmth overcoming your back, you know, coming to it. And we'll do this when we do our first first uh, disease, okay, uh, today. And you'll feel, oh, the chi and blood do actually move to, to our area, okay? uh, to the area affected. And I would say if any of you have any other Dong Spon books and you see San Jing or um, um, you see what's called... Um, uh, needling effect, or you see something called what uh, the nerve effect, okay? Uh, you should translate that into a more modern interpretation. Uh, uh, to me, acupuncture is a targeting system. So when I'm targeting and I aim well, I can hit the target. It's just like throwing darts. If I throw darts, then they should hit the target, stick into the into the target rather than hitting the wall, okay? So because I use acupuncture as a targeting system and musculoskeletal disorders are very easy to treat, uh, you can see what the effect is on musculoskeletal right away. And then from that point, uh, when you're looking at um, internal medicine problems, you can start seeing changes as well to the body. Any questions about this so far? So I would have to say one is, the, is don't just go by the point location, you palpate for the most sore areas. Number two, use your nail when you're palpating so that you make sure you pinpoint it exactly where you need to insert the needle. Insert the needle, and then sometimes you give a stimulation to the needle. You might twirl it. You don't have to have dutchy. You, you, you could, you don't have to have it, but what happens is you, you do ask the patient, okay, now that I put this needle in, can you move a little bit the affected area? And if they can move the affected area a little bit, then that's great. So let's say a patient has right-sided sciatica, might even be good to put a few needles in the hand or the arm. Okay, for example, lingu da bai, or the three scholars points on the upper arm here on the bicep area, and then have them even walk around with the needles and see if the low back pain and the sciatica get better. And you know you can start pinpointing different areas. Where is the source of the pain exactly? It's not just spray and pray needles. Okay, uh, you know a lot of people think, uh, oh, you know I'm never going to learn to shoot properly, so I go uh, shoot a shotgun because it'll just spray a whole bunch of needles. That that's not exactly true too. You have to know sight picture when you're shooting a shotgun. You cannot just shoot a shotgun by itself. So, and then the, the spray of the needles, it may dissipate from a, from a shell, but it comes out and the grouping is very, very tight. So you still have to aim with the thing. You cannot just say, um, no, it's not good enough. So, 
you know, uh, some people read the other books on Dong's acupuncture and they say reaction area. Reaction area is when I use this point, there's a reaction to that area. Okay. And that's what Master Dong meant. Okay. So a lot of people, they, they read it and they understand it, uh, but their interpretation is, shall we say, a little bit off. And then even though Master Dong has 72 disciples, really only a handful of them were medical pr practitioners. For example, Dr. Yang was. Uh, Dr. Wong was, and then um, um, uh, there's a, a Tibetan gentleman in Canada, in Toronto area. He he was also uh, studying to be an MD in Taiwan, right? So then he had uh, Paladin Carson, right? He he was uh, had some actual medical background. Okay, the rest, most of them were like laymen, but some of them were already established acupuncturists too. So. Your mileage may vary when you're teaching people like that. And then uh, let's not forget, Master Dong was old school when he was teaching. Uh, what happened was he saw the patient, asked the patient what's going on, and then he would treat them. Okay, so then uh, the disciples were asked to come into the room, and they all go in uh, with their pad and their pen, and they're writing down and said, and then Master Dong points to this, this grouping of points, and he says, Sima. Sima Zhong, Sima Shang, Sima Xia. And then he leaves the room and then goes to his waiting area and sips some tea. Okay. The students are looking at each other like, what? And then one of them has enough courage to ask the patient, sir, uh, what did the, the master uh, treating you for? He goes, oh, well, I got some chest pain. It was a chest pain. Oh, okay, sima. So then he, they're thinking the grouping of sima is for chest pain. So they see another uh, patient the same day. And again, same same scenario. Master Dong uh, brings them in after he treats the patient. He says, uh, uh, san chong, san chong yi, ar, san. That's it. And then walks away. So the disciples are the ones who wrote down the point location, the point description, how much distance it is. So your mileage may vary. The more you read in Chinese on the Dong's books, you realize, man, some of these guys didn't know their topical anatomy. Well, what the heck were they doing? You know, you're you're wondering. It's like this is how the medicine was 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 passed on. They were not licensed acupuncturists. So when I wrote the books, I made sure that uh, it was in the TCM language. And that you guys who are TCM practitioners will understand where the point location is in relationship. Because some of the points locations in, in Chinese are actually quite sketchy in the Dong system, you know. And uh, here I am fill, spilling out the family secrets, but there's a lot of truth to what I'm saying. And then a lot of people don't understand what the reaction area really means. And... Uh, there should be a reaction to the area when I needle this. That's what he means. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. A lot of people in Dong's acupuncture like to do uh, painful needling. In fact, uh, Dong himself was reputed to have 22 gauge needles, 24 gauge needles, 26 gauge needles. And then when he ran out, he went to the knitting needle store to get some more. Okay. Uh, he did not use regular uh, style needles. Uh, there is a point uh, of this, haha, uh, pun intended. The pun is uh, is that uh, you know big needles have a lasting effect on you. You never forget your big needles that are inserted into you, right? And you never forget the big pain that of of that needling. Okay, and so um, I want you to know that uh, sometimes when you use big needles, it's a big powerful stimulus to the body and you never forget it right and then you could do that so um dr tiara thank you very much miriam used to say uh move it and make it hurt that's true that's true all right anyway uh let's sum up why needle distally you can see the immediate effect traditionally these were the most powerful points channel theory is not theory because theory is just a hypothesis but we should understand that the channels are principles, okay, for us to go by. Principle means that it's proven to work. Why are we still at stage one where it's a theory or a hypothesis? 
It doesn't really work, especially when we're 2,500 years old. We should not say that it's channel theory. Who talked about this stuff? And then who translated this stuff into English? And that's another major problem. As a person who is bilingual, um, I would have to say there's a lot of inadequacy in the translation. And um, you yourself have to translate and speak differently. For example, TCM people often talk to you know their patients and say, well, your chi and blood is stagnated. Your elements are out of order. Uh, your emotions are wrong. Uh, this and that. And then the patient looks at you like, what? You know, you're woo woo. You're really out there. So I want to kind of help educate my fellow colleagues so that you don't go doing some crazy things like that. Right. Uh, and, and then lose your business or lose any referrals from doctors and, and the like. I, I want to improve the standard of the business and uh, of our profession. So I would like you to talk to the doctors and I would like you to uh, really like uh, get a better uh, presentation of yourself. You say, how do, what is the mechanism of acupuncture? The mechanism of acupuncture is I give your body stimulation so that it invokes a healing response. That is the mechanism of acupuncture. I don't say chi and blood stasis. I, I don't say I move chi and move blood because people are gonna look at me like, whoa, you're a nut. You're woo woo. You're out there. I don't even want to bother with you. But if you see what I'm saying, all right, you're using your mind's intent, and therefore uh, you have this result. Okay. So Thomas has a has a quote in the chat. He says, "Best results aim with the guiding needle strategy, Dong method. Yi dao, qi dao. Mind uh, arrives, or mind intent arrives, and then the qi arrives. That's true. That is from qi gong." And that is from acupuncture. We should have it. So uh, acupuncturists, I strongly suggest uh, you do some sort of uh, training. And learn some real Tai Chi. Don't learn Tai Chi. It's Tai Chi. Okay? Uh, uh, that's number one. And uh, learn some Qigong as well. Because why? If you can feel it, you will understand more about what we do and uh, what our practice is all about. And then finally, if you needle locally, you can injure or aggravate the affected area. The worst thing is to be blamed for aggravating a patient's pain or causing it to be worse or have a lawsuit because of it. Okay, so uh, that's one of the advantages of uh, not having to needle locally. Okay, so I know uh, a certain group of acupuncturists, uh, dry needlers and, uh, and uh, orthopedic type uh, people they, they say, no, 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 you really have to do it local. You, it doesn't work the other way. I'm trying to say, uh, try what I have to say and then do it. But you'll see, there's times that I have to use local points too, because why? Uh, when we talk about Bell's palsy, I'll talk about my experience and uh, what I had to do. Okay, anyway. And also, uh, uh, let's give you some treatment plan guidelines. Always look at the diet and lifestyle during the initial consultation. Initial consultation, make sure you charge for your time, okay? I don't mean take a, a three-hour initial consultation or two-hour initial consultation. I say do a one-hour consultation and then talk and move things along and let the patient talk. And then while he they're talking, you equate what their problems are. Uh, and in, the, in terms of musculoskeletal problems, you see, okay, what channel? Where's the pain, uh, where does it originate? Actually look at it, ask the patient if you can palpate it too. They can point it out to you, the, you palpate it, you see, you both understand it, you notice that there's treatment, you can look at the tongue, you can look at the pulse, you can look at the ear, you can look at the palm, you can look at the face, you could do diagnosis based on all of these methods. These are all great methods, they're fine, these are all classical methods, but if you wanna do acupuncture, you have to at least do one thing identify the channels, because if you identify the channels, you have the main method of treating and, and diagnosis of what's going on in acupuncture, okay? Now, if you want to write an herbal formula, yes, at bare minimum, you should take the pulse and look at the tongue, okay? As well as understand their signs and symptoms, okay? I don't want you to always think that uh, you have to do it in the manner that you learn in TCM school, because as I said, again, TCM is herbalized acupuncture. Okay. 
And a course of treatment is usually about 10 visits twice a week uh, for five weeks is a, is a general course of treatment that you can easily explain it to. And people say, oh, well, can, how can I explain that? 10, geez, I, you know, I only ask them to come once a week or whenever they want to. No, your patients, uh, your practice is based on your patient visits. So even if you have one patient and they visit you two or three times a week, you have at least three patient visits per week for that one patient. So you, your clinical success is really based on your managing your clinical time to see the patient at least two or three times a week. If you don't see them two or three times a week, uh, then I say you're doing yourself a disservice, right? And you should continue to, to at least show them a course of treatment. So for example, anti, um, antibiotics, you have to take it for a period of 10 days straight. And if you take it for a period of 10 days, then they'll see, well, should we continue with the antibiotics or not, okay? Uh, if you're taking steroids, you know, there's probably a 10 pack, which is going to wean you, right? And then what happens then is they'll decide there. So yes, I make patients pay for five weeks, two to three prepay. Yes, uh, they have a package in general that, that does it. And people say, well, you know, uh, the you're supposed to take and accept a certain amount. I charge about $990. Uh, $1,000 for a 10 pack. So it's about $100 per per package. And uh, don't be ashamed of it, right? Be be proud of it, right? Because why? Uh, they're paid, you, they have a credit card uh, on tab with you, or you can run it every time, or you they can prepay a certain amount. And if they prepay a certain amount, what happens is they um, are deducted with a balance. You keep track of the balance and you deduct it accordingly. Now, uh, I'm not a billing person, uh, nor do I play one on TV. I suggest that if you are practicing elsewhere in other states and other states have certain requirements, then you talk to them uh, about what the state requirements are with regards to packages. Okay, so I'm, I want to take away any responsibility for your practice in your state or country. I don't know exactly what your local laws are. So uh, you'll have to see that, okay, for yourself. All right, and uh, and don't be afraid to suggest two or three courses of treatment if needed with acupuncture, all right? And in the meantime, you can also prescribe herbs as homework. And at any given time, you always give a month's supply of herbs. Do not give one bottle of herbs. Get four to, to eight bottles of herbs, and that's the way to do it. You do not give one bottle of herbs. One bottle of herbs is probably over in about two or three days. Then you have to ask for a refill and then do it again. I would not do it like that. You do four bottles, okay? And then on the last bottle, you tell them, contact you so that you can reorder it and then have them take it and do it. And they'll see the gradual effects of herbs. Herbs are more subtle than uh, drugs. And as a result of it, they will see if they gradually take it, that they will gradually get better. And that's how, how it feels, okay? It's very natural and very little side effect because of that, all right? So that's my treatment plan I'm gonna discuss with you guys. If you have any questions, you can put it in the chat or ask, uh, put it in the Q&A and I'll go over it in detail. Okay, Master Dong's acupuncture makes use of what we call Dao Ma Zen, or as uh, Dr. Wang called it, Hui Ma Zen. Dao Ma means uh, guiding horses, and uh, Hui Ma is uh, backing up horses to examine. Just think of it as uh, master strokes, okay? So uh, in Chinese martial arts, you know, you might have seen the Yip Man movies. Uh, uh, in the Yip Man movies, particularly the Grandmaster, Yip Man is talking about there's eight kicks or there's three hands in Wing Chun, right? So the eight kicks, you know, okay, you can see the see the movie and then you'll see the eight kicks, the three hands, Han So, Fang So, Fuk So, okay? So these three hands uh, are the master strokes of Wing Chun. Of course, not the hands by itself, but combination of striking and all, then you'll see, okay, uh, that's what they mean. So 
I think of it is these uh, strokes, these three needles combination, two needle combinations of master dong, they're kind of like master strokes in martial arts, okay? And so this is a one way to uh, do, do it. I'm the grand student of Yip Man. I think my life was to be grand students of uh, great masters, okay? So, uh, you know, I, I, I am uh, Yip Man's uh, grand student. My, my Sifu of 32 years passed on recently. Um, Hawkins Chung, he passed on at the uh, beginning of the pandemic. And, uh, you know, I've, I've missed him daily. And, um, you know, I still keep up the practice. So very happy to, to do it. Anyway, okay, so uh, that's what you're looking at with the groupings of, of needles, okay? So there's always what we call dalma or huima grouping, okay? Think of them as master strokes, okay? All right, uh, this is Dr. Wang's opinion. This is the uh, five zhang syndrome. And if you see, uh, uh, Dr. Wang is talking about uh, the three points here. Okay, so let's say Tong Tian, this is the first point. Tong Tian, uh, you would palpate in the various areas, and this is why he calls it Hui Ma instead of Dao Ma, okay? Because he's trying to search and palpate for the actual point and where it is, okay? The Master Dong uh, uh, description would be to find the point at this anatomical location but it could be more or less the same in, in the same area. Then there's Tongshan. Tongshan is supposed to be here, but you might palpate it here, might palpate it there, might palpate it there. So the palpation reveals the truth of the needling, okay? So uh, Dr. Wang suggests that you find a reaction point, okay? Which is, he's calling a reaction point. And usually you know this reaction point because you were learning this terminology in school. It's a shi, right? And a shi, of course, is the Beijing person's way of pronouncing the same thing in English. But in English, uh, you know, we add a T to it. But in Chinese, we say it without the T, okay? So it's like a shi, a shi right? I, I, you've located the point, okay? So uh, I want you to understand uh, what what Dr. Wang is talking about, the reaction point. You're inspecting, you're going upper, lower, left or right, you're pressing, you're inspecting the area. You're kind of doing like a local acupressure session first, and then you find the point in the area. So uh, Dr. Wang's uh, opinion is very good. Um, you know, I, uh, I made some last minute revisions. So if you wanna take a picture of it, uh, go take a picture of it for yourself, but uh, it's in Dr. Wong's teachings of uh, uh, on on E Lotus as well. So uh, you know, hopefully you don't just see me. I, I mean, I, I know my handsome face and and my funny jokes. Uh, you can come and see me, but uh, definitely go visit Dr. Wong for his teachings, and then you can see his wonderful powerpoints and slides, and then uh, you can see his understanding. Okay. All right. Uh, regarding teaching Tai Chi, I don't teach Tai Chi yet. I don't feel I'm old enough to teach Tai Chi or patient enough to teach Tai Chi. And then I uh, I still teach Wing Chun and going to start a class again very soon in the Los Angeles area. So might be going back to Chinatown and teaching. So we're just in discussion of it right now. So, OK, well, let's look at the first uh, first uh, disease, neck and shoulder pain. OK. And um, well, first of all, before I start, was there any other questions with regards to what I just discussed? Anything I can help you with or anything that's not clear? And I appreciate it. Uh, all of your uh, uh, lovely discussion and it certainly helps. Okay, very good. All right, so I'm gonna move on to neck and shoulder pain. And if, if you have your needles, Go get your needles and we can do this, okay? All right, so neck and shoulder pain is the most common musculoskeletal problem that I see females for. Yesterday, I know I discussed low back pain for men. However, women do get low back pain too. However, if you talk about the incidence of neck and shoulder pain, 
um, in, in female patients, I would say is higher than in men, all right? And uh, there's, of course, a lot of reasons for it. Number one might be poor posture, okay? Uh, you know, because you're sitting down for a long time, um, you know, your malposition or you have to carry babies or carry groceries or do housework or, or work all day long and then see patients or perhaps you're working in the acupuncture clinic and your treatment table is too low for you, okay? You can't possibly, you have to bend over and you feel pain and hunched over or you're reading something on the computer, you're sitting all day on an e-lotus seminar and then you notice, oh man, I got neck and shoulder pain that hurts, okay? You might have to change your posture or you might have to change your chairs or, or otherwise, or you have, might have to move at every break. For example, every break today, I'm gonna be doing 10 exercise, uh, 10 repetitions of a particular exercise. So usually I do 10 push-ups, uh, 10 trunk twists, and then 10 squats, okay? And I get my blood moving so that, you know, I make the best use of break time. And that takes me about a minute or two. And then I can go and use the restroom and then I can get more water or tea or whatever to, to make myself feel better, okay? And so there can be also injury to the neck and shoulder because why? Uh, you had a car accident, there's some whiplash and some other type of fall, okay? Uh, maybe you're into MMA, you get hit in the head, blocking, uh, right? You got hit, there's a lot of trauma to that. There's also repetitive strain, arthritis or osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, okay? Pinched nerve, herniated disc of the neck, right? Very, very common, no matter what it is, okay? And then there's stress and emotional and mental stress. Now, sometimes I like to ask patients about their musculoskeletal disorders. Who is this pain in the neck that you're carrying around? Who, whose burden are you shouldering, ladies? Okay. Uh, who's the one who's a monkey on your back? Whose weight are you carrying, okay, in your lower back, okay? That, whose burden that you have to carry and lift, okay? Because why? Ac accordingly, a person's body is reactive to their emotions, and there's a lot of armoring. Especially ladies, you have the neck and back and shoulder soreness, it's because you're dealing with a lot of stress and carrying loads that you're not supposed to be carrying. Uh, you're doing too much. And I know, I've, you know, I was a, a young man who grew up under my mother's uh, care. My father wasn't around uh, when I was a young boy. And uh, I saw my mom worked all the time and did, went to work, then did the housework, then did all the laundry, cooked for us, cleaned for us. It's very, very difficult. And I understand how difficult it is for women who are often juggling uh, more than one, uh, more than just a career, or even if you're doing things at home, uh, it's a lot of work to have to take care of. And so a lot of uh, partners are not conscious as to what people do with regards to uh, uh, what they do every day. And as a result of it, there's a lot of stress emotional and mental stress that causes muscles tension, leads to pain and discomfort, okay? And of course, some people do have fibromyalgia. Mm, I don't know if I'm talking about fibromyalgia today, but uh, that's uh, something that is because of spleen chi um, and then uh, weak wei chi, okay? Spleen chi deficiency and weak wei chi leads to wind cold dampness in, uh, that settles into the neck and shoulders, right? but that can also be a cause of it. And then of course there's tension headaches, which may be a cause from neck pain and shoulder pain, or just having tension headaches in the head would lead to a tightening or armoring of the neck and shoulders, okay? So yes, exactly. Thomas, that is exactly my guide. Uh, and when we do acupuncture, we're doing the physical, we're doing the mental, we're doing the emotional, 
right? Uh, we are doing the spiritual aspects of it, right? And so, and then, of course, as you're saying, look at the trauma, look at the emotional stress, look at the chemical uh, that people are taking, the nutrition that they're taking, or the drugs that they're taking. So certainly the case of it, okay? So acupuncture, for simple neck and shoulder pain, just use two points. My two points, UB60 and GB39. UB60, I do insertion with a 1.5 ton needle. That's because the lateral malleolus is in the way and I may not be getting a deep puncture. So uh, I, I use a longer needle to give me a more deeper puncture. And I only go in maybe half a ton at most. I don't try to go out of uh, an exit out of kidney three. I just try to keep it within within the Achilles tendon area. And then I insert GB39, okay? Uh, so I'll talk about that in a little bit. And if it's more intense, I, I use the master dome points Qi Hu and San Chong, okay? The San Chong Dao Ma said, okay? So let's take a look at it. So if for pain, we typically use it in the opposite manner, okay? So let's say I have left side neck and shoulder pain. So I will needle UB60 and GB39. It'd be very, very simple. If it's more severe, then I would do Qi Hu and I would do San Chong, okay? But in general, I do it the opposite side. Now, could you do it this way, GB39 and UB60 that moves to the left side and you stay and treat only the left side? Yes, you could do that as well, okay? Why? Because top is the opposite of bottom, okay? So don't always think it's diagonally opposite. It could also be top and bottom is opposite, okay? And of course, we know that the ankle in Dong's acupuncture images the, images the neck, okay? Ankle is the neck. Ankle is the wrist, you could say, depending on which imaging system, okay? Uh, Armine, I, I, I don't want to talk about uh, this right now, okay? Uh, let's just get through this, uh, this example, but I could talk to you about this offline, about rotator cuff tendonitis, okay? Uh, I think it's more outside the scope of what I'm teaching. Maybe I'll come back on, on e-lotus and teach a, a musculoskeletal class, okay? A pain disorders, okay? Maybe we could do that. Okay, and so... I could also consider doing Tongzi Tongxian uh, for neck pain, as well as uh, as well as these Dong's points. So let's look at the points here. Tongzi Tongxian, okay, is actually the palmer side of what we call Lingu and Li4. Okay, it's the palmer side. If you don't know where it is, I would say Lingu is just distal to the junction of the first and second uh, metacarpal bones. Okay, and so. Uh, Li4, of course, everybody knows where Li4 is. So if I were to go through it, then okay, this would be Tongzi, and this would be Tongxian, right? I know it because I know these Linggu and Li4 very well. So that's the easiest way to say it. Don't thread them like this. Don't think you thread them. No, do perpendicular insertion on both of them, okay? Does anyone want to do some needling now? If they can do some needling now, I'd advise you to use a one thread needle and then perpendicular insertion to it. And then move your head and shoulders a little bit and then see uh, what the result is. Even if you don't do, um, even if we don't do um, the needling, but let's say we do the acupressure on those areas, you might feel, oh, I'm already getting loose because I did Tongzi Tongxian. If I do pressure and I'm using a, a probe and I already feel, wow, I'm getting looser on the neck and shoulders right now, okay? Now, Suda, Sudamini, you know, I'm sorry if I uh, I uh, butchered the, the pronunciation of your name. Uh, she says, she asks, if a patient that has right shoulder pain, can we needle both sides, GB39 and UB60? Don't, don't fall into the trap of the acupuncture supervisor. Okay, I was an acupuncture supervisor, you know, and then I would say, okay, the patient has shoulder pain, just do UB60, GB39, opposite. And then the student looks at me and says, can I do bilateral, right? Well, 
because I was reading about Prince Charles and Lady Diana and Camilla. Well, I didn't want to. I didn't want to get disturbed. I said, "Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go do, go do bilateral." And that's exactly what happens. And that's why a lot of you are bilateral wonders. Okay, everything is bilateral. Come on, it's a one person. So because it's one person, choose a side, only one side. That's all you need. Okay. And when I was supervising in the clinic, you know, I mean, Charles was uh, having a good time with uh, Lady Camilla on the side, you know, and then, you know, the hot babe, uh, Lady Diana, you know, she's moving off to France and going out with this guy and that guy, you know, of course, go, go and do your bilateral needling because, you know, I got to read my article in the National Enquirer, which is really deep uh, reading. Okay. All right. Anyway, I, I gave you too much insight into the world of the acupuncture supervisor, haven't I? Uh, I've blown it for my fellow uh, instructors. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, I am British, you know, so I, I have to follow the royal family. Yes. Okay. Anyway, for depth of the hand points, go in. Half chun. Half chun. Don't be afraid. Go in half chun. Okay. All right. So this is the set of points called San Chong. San Chong is GB39. Then go up to Chun and then go up to Chun. Okay. GB39, then go up to Chun and go up to Chun. So collectively, they are called San Chong as the Dalma set. Okay. Dalma set, as we know, the master strokes. You see why I call it master strokes? If some of you like boxing or uh, how shall we say, uh, exercise boxing, uh, you left jab, right cross, hook. Okay, that's a uh, that's uh, master strokes of boxing. All right, left jab, right cross, uppercut. Right. So then you have those three. Those are master strokes. That's what Master Dong was doing. Yi Tong, Ar Tong, San Zong. Yeah. So that's what he did. Now sometimes you see Tong uh, Romanized as Zhong. The Chinese character can be pronounced both ways, but in Dong's practitioners, we say San Chong, okay? It means layers, not heavy, uh, but it, the, the Chong character can be heavy, can be heavy as well, okay? And so that's how we do it. So here's the neck, here's the shoulder, here's the upper back, okay? We could consider the imaging that way, okay? So ER San Chong, so we use it like that, so. Yeah, some of you are just using acupressure to release the neck. Great. Now stick in the needle. You see it better. Okay. Even, even better. Okay. And so uh, this is my go-to when it's severe neck and shoulder pain and upper back pain as well. Here we have Chi Hu. Now, Chi Hu, oh, this illustration, unfortunately, is the incorrect one. Again, now how deep? As deep as it can stick. Okay. Uh, this is one of my old illustrations. I uh, because I wasn't wearing reading glasses, I I didn't I didn't realize it. But Chi Hu is actually first find UB sixty, then go up to Chun from there, and then go up to Chun and to Chun. That's where traditionally Chi Hu is. Okay, you you might say this is my mistake, Chi Hu. Okay. So here is using UB60 first. My artist made a mistake here using UB60. I, I can correct this later on and give it to you guys. All right, maybe I'll send it to Donna and then you guys can download it later on, okay? So this uh, Chi Hu is the first point is actually here. Two trend above UB60, go up two trend and then go up two trend from there, okay? Of course, the correct book, uh, my books, if you have my books, they have the correct illustrations. So sorry about this one. I'll have to make a note and correct this one. So thank you so much. I get better and better too when I'm teaching these. And, uh, you know, sometimes you, you recognize, oh, I made a mistake. So I'm fallible and human and uh, I apologize. Uh, do I find better results by needling tighter, tighter to the bone in the fascia? Yes, in the first one, Sanchong, you should needle very, very close to the bone. Just scrape the periosteum, will you? Okay, uh, no worries about it at all. With regard to Chi Hu, uh, just go anterior to the Achilles tendon, okay, and you can palpate it. And you should do palpation on each point, and you should use your nail 
So you can't fail. Okay, so let's remember that. Okay, use your nail and it can't can't fail. And uh, this is the better way. Now constants, I, I already told you, I don't use those numbers. Okay, because I prefer you to use the Chinese name. If it's only 20 or 30 that you use in the clinic every day, you can afford to use the Chinese number, uh, use the Chinese name as opposed to the numbering system. You know, imagine if we use the numbering system for Chinese herbs. You know what? It would never stick in your head. Like Ma Huang would be 1.1 and Guizhu would be 1.2, okay? And then, so then you write a formula, 1.1, 1 plus 1, 1.2, three grams of 1.2 and nine grams of 1.1 and then uh, five grams of 1.6, okay, for wind cold uh, disease. That's uh, one of the best ways to explain why the Master Dong numbering system is terrible and should be abolished and destroyed. The only good thing is you could use it to cross-reference other people's works as to the point location for it, okay? But otherwise, in our common talk, let's just use the Chinese name, Qi Hu, just like you know Ma Huang and you know what Gui Zhi is, okay? Uh, don't be afraid to use the Chinese name. And in fact, the numbers of the Chinese points uh, are meaningless. Also, uh, actually, the names have a lot of meaning. So uh, at this point, when you've been a long-term practitioner of Chinese medicine, go and study the Chinese names of the, of the acupuncture points. You do yourself a lot of good. You wanna know something funny? I lectured on Dong's acupuncture for the last, last decade in the 2000s, okay? Oh, close to two decades if you're thinking about it, right? But um, in, in lecturing on, the, on it, do you know who has the highest standard of, of acupuncture knowledge anywhere besides China and Taiwan? Can you guess? And Singapore and Southeast Asia, of course. All right. And Korea, all right. And Japan, all right. We'll, we'll figure that out. Let's, let's ask, okay? Here in the Western world, who has the best acupuncturists who are well-educated, best educated? Of course, in California, we can boast and say, yeah, we're the best educated. It's true. In the United States, Californians are the best educated Chinese medicine practitioners. They do both herbals and acupuncture. And, you know, like some in other states, well, they know acupuncture, but they don't know herbs. It's really, really bad. So what I would have to say is uh, the people in Vancouver and Victoria, they asked me, uh, Dr. Chu, can you stop using the international nomenclature and use the Chinese name of the points? And I said, what? They said, yes, what's UB40? I said, UB40 is Wei Zhong, okay? He said, yes, can you, can you continue to use the names of the points? I said, okay, so here I'm using Wei Zhong, and then I use uh, He Gu, and then I use uh, Ho Ying, Ho Zhu, okay? And then if I want to, I can add Xuanzong here, okay? So I had to use the Chinese names of the points. I was so impressed with the, with the Canadians, the, especially in British Columbia area, right? Vancouver and Victoria, they knew their stuff well and put Californian acupuncturists to shame. So kudos to you guys in Canada, okay? Now, there's some questions here. Um, treating a lot of obese people, uh, sometimes hard to feel the bone. With, tre with training and practice, you will feel the bone. All you have to do is be a little bit more aggressive and press down. And then if you use your nail, you'll feel better, okay? Use your nail and you can't fail, okay? Uh, let me see, what else is there? 28.8 minutes retention. When I started the Dong's acupuncture system, Dr. Yang insisted on 28.8 minutes retention. His idea was there was 50 cycles of qi in a day, there's 1440 minutes in a day because 24 hours times 60 is 1440, 1440 divided by 50, one cycle of uh, needle retention should be 28.8 minutes or 30 minutes clinically. I have to say, it's not true. After reading the classics, Maybe it's a nice guideline, 
Maybe it's a nice uh, rest time for the patients. But after reading the classics, really, uh, they said, some people say six breaths. Some people say three breaths. Some people say seven breaths. Some people say nine breaths for the retention of a needle, okay? As I am practicing daily, um, I would have to say it doesn't really matter that long. If you, As long as, as I would say at least two minutes to about a half hour on the table for needle retention, I think you're good to go, okay? So 28.8, I know when I taught early in Master Dong's acupuncture, I would say, yes, it, it took a lot of time uh, you know, to needle. But after studying Master Dong's cases that Dr. Wong had uh, had taught in his class, okay, I would say Dr. Master Dong did not retain for such a long time, 28.8 minutes, since he used thick gauge needles. You cannot su survive a long-term retention of, of a thick gauge needle. You put it in, uh, he twirls it a few times, you're like screaming and writhing, and um, you, you, uh, you, you take out the needle. You don't retain it for 28.8 minutes. I wanna tell you something. I had severe sciatica when my kids were very young and we went to visit grandma up in San Francisco area. Uh, I remember what my wife said to me. Let's take the scenic route. Let's go up the one. Well, going up the one, also led to uh, an extended drive, especially on a Friday evening, right? And we didn't make it to uh, San Francisco to the next morning because we had to stay overnight up in Santa Barbara area, okay? Uh, my son was crying all the time because he had an ear infection. He was just a baby. And uh, it took like about 10, 12 hours total to drive up to uh, San Francisco. I was suffering that evening when I got to San Francisco. Um, I had to, was writhing in pain. And um, I, I said, oh man, I need acupuncture. I really need acupuncture, right? So I had to find someone. And who did I find? I went to Esther Sue's clinic in San Jose. Little did I know that traveling from uh, Moraga, or shall I say Boraga, uh, because it's so boring over there, uh, to, San, uh, to San Jose would take me another hour plus to drive over there. And when I drove there for an hour plus, oh my God, I could barely walk and get out of the car. Now, I remember Esther, she used a very thick needle, I had at least 30 gauge needle. And she put that 30 gauge needle into my UB40 uh, while I was lying down. I never forgot how big that 30 gauge needle was and she turned it and turned it and then she retained it i my god i was in such terrible excruciating pain and so you know as for me in los angeles here i have a lot of uh i have a lot of wimp patients they like thin needles i i prefer using 36 gauge needles as i get older i don't mind using thicker needles but my patients like it when i use uh, 38 gauge needles or 40 gauge needles. For the face and the hands, I typically, and the ears, I use a 40 gauge needle. For the body, I use a 38 gauge needle. And I use it in three sizes typically, half trun, one trun, and 1.5 trun. I don't need any five or six trun needles. I don't do any local points. I certainly don't do any more GB30 points because I could tell you when I teach musculoskeletal that I have uh, PTSD, and, you know, I can't handle it anymore. You know, I still I still cry and whimper. You know, the first time that I had an eye infection, I wasn't wearing my glasses. I wasn't wearing eye, uh, contact lenses. And I said, sir, could you remove your shirt? And I'm going to have to needle you locally. And um, he says, okay. So I come back after getting some needles. And I said, sir, could you remove your shirt? He goes, I already did. And then I looked very closely and I saw... He was a hairy guy, and I thought he was still wearing his black T-shirt, and I was, like, shocked. I was like, whoa, what the heck? And then so as a, as a result of it, I've had PTSD since. And then uh, the same goes for hairy butts on GB30. No more of that for me. Okay, anyway. All right. So, all right, I'm going through it. Jody, yeah, try the Chinese name, okay? Well, that's it. Just practice. 
and you guys are in France, okay. Why is it called Seven Tigers? Chi Hu, it, it shows that it goes from the east and it's dealing with what? Dealing with the liver and Hu is uh, is also dealing with the, the, the side. So it's called Chi Hu because it is manifesting the strength of a tiger so that you're, you're it's dealing with wind coming into the body and hence its name okay i hope that answers it uh, henry henry uh, mccann teaches it and explains it from the point of view of the uh, so the number seven has a significant uh, uh, meaning with regards to wind and wood okay all right uh, armine yes the the names are more easy to uh, recall very good, thank you. And then 28.8, I think I explained it. Okay, Canada, and can you imagine? Well, I think there's recently some uh, talk about she helping out uh, the Prime Minister of Canada. Hmm, interesting. Machio just said 10 to 15 minutes. Sure, okay, great. And um, what's 0 0.22 now? I don't know what, what that point is. If, if you're talking about uh, one of the points, I'm not sure which one that is. Okay, so like I said, I'm I'm point number for with regards to Master Dong. Um, I'm very dumb with regard to it. Okay, some patients want to sleep for an hour. I want you to know uh, that's a double-edged sword for you, okay, in your clinic. If you think that your patients take your clinic as a sleep clinic, I had one whiny boy who uh, came in and uh, he was getting treatment and his mother wanted to sit with him. Uh, he's 21 years old, unbelievable. And he's, he's, he was quite a mama's boy. And I remember I had several patients uh, that day when I saw him at the same time, he was in his room. And then I had other patients in other rooms and I was talking to them. and. Uh, when I came back to his room, he scolded me for waking him up. And I said, I'm sorry, what's going on? He goes, usually I can fall asleep uh, when I'm on the table. But today, I could not fall asleep because of the noise that you made with your other patients and you, Dr. Chu. And I'm thinking to myself, 21-year-old mama's boy, if mama wasn't here, I might be apt to uh, take you over my knee and slap your behind. But I simply said to him, I said, young, young sir, this is not a sleep clinic. This is an acupuncture clinic. And in case you didn't realize, I do have other patients that I have to take care of and see. They are going to make noise, right? So if you want to sleep and take a nap, go home. But if you could fall asleep with the needles here, great. But don't think that this is a don't think that this is a sleep clinic because indeed it is not a sleep clinic. And if you can't sleep here, go home and sleep, okay? So I, I do want you guys to know, do not ever, ever, ever think uh, that you uh, have to uh, let your, your patients sleep in the clinic, okay? All right, so 12 minutes, okay, you guys don't have to do it. Okay, Eric. Yes, unfortunately, I, I had to visit grandma in Moraga. Mor uh, grandma went back to Taiwan, so I don't have to visit Moraga anymore. Orinda, ugh. okay. Anyway, all right, let's see. Uh, okay, I talked about needle gauges. Yes, okay, all right, very good. All right, so for uh, local treatment, Okay, outside of uh, UB60 and GB39, which you already know, is uh, you could use 701 patches for topical application. You can use Ditajio. I make my own uh, Ditajio that uh, I, I put in spray bottles and then spray it on. It's available to you acupuncturists if you want it. Uh, just contact me and then I can arrange for shipment. I sell it by the dozen and uh, I have a few of my students who are are selling my product. Um, I use Zengo Sui, but I have my own reformulated version of Zengo Sui because uh, current day Zengo Sui as a topical is largely salicylic acid and some menthol and uh, menthol and camphor, which I feel is inadequate. And the actual um, 
herbals are better. Um, let me see. What are my thoughts of alcohol-based detox gel versus oil-based salves? Well, I think one is less less oily for sure. I prefer detox gel because gel is wine, and wine allows things to circulate. You know, alcohol moves the blood quicker and is better for uh, for traumatology type of things. And then the formula that I would say for neck and shoulder pain is Chang Huo. Sheng Shi Tang is the classical formula. And you can also use for shoulder pain more is a, a famous patent formula called Jing Gu Di Shang Wan. Now, of course, Evergreen has their own versions of it. And I have listed them here because there's neck and shoulder acute, which is for acute uh, neck and shoulder pain. Uh, neck and shoulder chronic, which is for um, for chronic type of pain. Uh, there's a herbal an analgesic, ANG is analgesic, it will stop pain. And then flex, MLT, is uh, muscle, ligament, and tendons, right? It's kind of like what I mentioned before up here, which is uh, uh, the Didajio, as well as Jinggu Disangwan, which is the equivalent, okay? So uh, I do not get uh, my medicines from Tang Shou Dao uh, or association in New York. I think you're talking about uh, Tom Bizio's group. I've read some of his work. It's, it's excellent. His Zheng Gu Tuina is also very good. Um, I, I am also trained in traumatology. Uh, so I have my own formulas uh, that I use and pass down. So I have some very, very good formulas and uh, been experimenting with this Didajio for about 40 years now, okay? And I think I pretty much uh, perfected the recipe now, and it'd be very, very good to use. Uh, maybe E. Lotus wants to, uh, wants to carry it sometime. Okay, anyway, encourage range of motion exercises to the neck and shoulders, okay? So what uh, range of motion exercises could we do? We could do, extension and flexion of the neck. Okay, you, right now, do it along with me and you feel better in your neck and shoulders, especially we're sitting down here for so long. And then we can do lateral extension. Okay, usually six to eight repetitions is very good. And then we can do rotation. Full range, Just try to look over your shoulder, behind your back. Okay, so if you look over your shoulder behind your back, it's very good. And then you can do extension of the chin, contraction of the chin, extension of the chin, contraction, extension, contraction, extension, contraction, extension, contraction. Okay, and then shoulders, shrug them. You want to roll them forward, that's fine. You want to roll them backwards, that's fine. Okay, you want to shimmy shimmy here and shimmy shimmy there. Okay, you can do it, but don't get too carried away. All right, but those are very good things for you to do every day. And if you're feeling tight, that's like getting your own massage for your back and neck and shoulders, upper back and neck and shoulders. Okay, while you're needling with my points, you can do cupping, you can do guasa, you can apply topicals. Okay. And you can build them more for the, the other work that you did for them. But for me, I just put in two needles and leave the room and then go on to my next patient, okay? And that's a faster way of doing things, but that's up to you. But then, as I said, if you're gonna give them herbs, give them four bottles, not one bottle. Give them four bottles so that they take it regularly. And if they need it, they will do it. And the best thing is when you give them herbs, they think of you every day. Okay, at least three times a day they think of you. Okay, that's what I have for neck and shoulder pain. It is currently 1034. Okay, so let's take a 15 minute break, shall we, Donna? Okay, let's take a 15 minute break. So uh, let's say uh, we'll be back by 10.50, okay, 10.50, all right, see you back by 10.50, okay. <laughs> 